And it seems so simple. And here we are 40 years later. It clearly wasn't quite as simple as it seemed. We're testing the most fundamental theory of physics. Go for launch. I'd like to be able to tell my grandchildren that we either validated or, or invalidated some of Einstein's thinking. I mean, I think that's 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 pretty cool. <laughs> boils down to a simple question. Was Einstein's view of the universe right, or was it wrong? George Bernard Shaw at a banquet honoring Einstein. Napoleon and other great men of his type, they were makers of empire. But there is an order of men who get beyond that. They are not makers of empire, but they are makers of universe. are unstained by the blood of any human being on earth. Ptolemy made a universe which lasted 1,400 years. Newton also made a universe which has lasted 300 years. Einstein has made a universe, and I can't tell you how long that will last. <laughs> Isaac Newton was one of the greatest scientists of all time. He formulated the laws of gravitation and motion and the forces in our day-to-day -day life. These are the forces that move the planets around the sun, keep us standing on the ground, and shoot billiard balls across the pool table. For 200 years, the Newtonian universe was indeed the pinnacle of science. At the end of this period, James Clerk Maxwell formulated the laws of electromagnetism. He emphasized for the first time the fundamental importance of the speed of light and gave us a new force that generates electricity and keeps the compass needle aligned. But the laws of Newton and Maxwell failed to describe the world of the very small. Scientists like Max Planck Erwin Schrödinger, Werner Heisenberg, Richard Feynman, and many others formulated our view of nature at its tiniest scale. This is the realm of atoms, their nuclei, And quarks, the world of the very small, the world of quantum mechanics. From television to atom bombs, quantum mechanics has fundamentally transformed our everyday life. On the other end of the scale, Albert Einstein invented our modern understanding of the fabric of the universe. His ideas lead us into the realm of cosmology, where the universe is seen as a whole, with galaxies billions of light years away. And into a galaxy, where in its very center, millions or even billions of stars are condensed into a supermassive black hole. This is the realm of the very large and the very massive. This is Einstein's universe. 
It started in 1905 when Einstein published his special theory of relativity and changed Newton's absolute properties of space and time forever, weaving them together into a relativistic space-time continuum. Nothing can travel faster than light, and the speed of light itself is combined with mass and energy in his famous formula E equals mc squared. The equation E is equal mc squared. Then in 1916, Einstein published his general theory of relativity, where he had now combined space and time with gravity. A complete and utter departure from Newton's law of gravity and gave to the world an elegant, relativistic theory of our universe. Gravity is no longer Newton's force in absolute space and time, but rather the curvature of space-time itself. Einstein's four-dimensional space-time is a place where space-time grips matter, telling it how to move, and matter grips space-time, telling it how to curve. Today, quantum mechanics and general relativity are the two pillars of modern physics. However, their mathematical languages are completely incompatible. Quantum mechanics is written in the language of particles, waves, probabilities, and path integrals. General relativity is written in the entirely different language of geometry and geodesics. But if the mathematical languages of quantum mechanics and general relativity are so entirely different from each other, how do we know that general relativity really describes the universe accurately? The validity of quantum mechanics is demonstrated every day. Our understanding of the atomic world has brought us our modern technology from television to atom bombs. But much less evidence exists in favor of general relativity. In the realm of black holes and the universe on a grand scale, the language of general relativity is spoken, and it's spoken very loudly. But here in our tiny solar system, general relativity is spoken with but a whisper. However, we cannot go to a black hole to test general relativity. We are stuck in our solar system. So we test general relativity here, but then with the utmost sensitivity. That is the goal of the Gravity Probe B mission. I like to think of Gravity Probe B as a sandwich. We are testing the most fundamental theory of physics. In order to do that test, we need to do an immense amount of very sophisticated engineering. And in order to do that engineering, we need to make use of the principles and techniques of quantum mechanics. To actually make all this happen, we have to build a collaboration between physicists and engineers at the real working level. And in doing that, we've had great benefit from the infrastructure that one finds at a place like Stanford University and in Silicon Valley. A few predictions of general relativity have been tested so far, but only with relatively moderate sensitivity.